Maybe you've heard that old song, way down yonder in the pawpaw patch, but maybe you don't know what a pawpaw is, other than maybe that guy that's married to your mama. Well, it turns out pawpaw is one of my favorite native North Carolina trees, and in historical times, it was much better known and appreciated than it is today. In fact, the first written record of pawpaw was in 1541 in the DeSoto Expedition, who recorded Native Americans cultivating this small tree in the east. And then, turns out, Lewis and Clark wrote about it in their travels. It was the favorite dessert of George Washington, and Thomas Jefferson liked it so much that he planted it in his gardens at Monticello. So why all the fuss, and how would you recognize a pawpaw if you saw one in the woods? Well, pawpaw is a small understory tree that grows in rich habitats like river bottoms. This is a chunk of tree from what used to be the state champion pawpaw tree before it was blown over by a hurricane. So you can see it really doesn't get very big. A huge one would be about 30 feet tall. This sapling shows the characteristic large oval leaves of pawpaw, which turn a beautiful yellow color in the fall. The flower appears in early spring and it hangs downward. It's a reddish purple in color with a slightly unpleasant odor. Many species of flies and beetles pollinate it and they think they come to it because they're fooled into thinking it's decaying meat. But what's famous about pawpaw is the fruit. It forms in small clusters on the tree. Uh, not all flowers produce the fruit. It doesn't successfully germinate often, but the fruit is very tasty uh, and is the largest edible native fruit in North America. This one is still unripe, so it'll grow a little bit bigger and get soft when it's ripe. You can eat it right off the tree as long as you avoid the big seeds, or you can use it in any recipe that calls for bananas. It's even made into tasty things like pawpaw ice cream and popsicles. So if you want to eat one from the wild, however, you need to beat the raccoons, possums, and even bears to it because they love the fruit. Recent research has shown that pawpaw contains chemicals called acetogenins in its leaves, bark, and twigs that are being developed for anti-cancer drugs and organic pesticides. And another reason to like it is because it's the host plant of zebra swallowtail butterflies, one of our most beautiful species. So if you see one of these beauties flying around, you know that there's a pawpaw patch somewhere in the area. So because of all this, there's been a renewed interest in pawpaw in recent years as a landscape plant and in cultivation. In fact, there's even a uh, annual pawpaw festival in Ohio that draws thousands of visitors. So the next time you're out in the woods, I hope you'll take a look, see if you can find a pawpaw, or maybe plant a couple on your property. From the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, thank you for observing a moment of science.